morning, Susan Stewart, uh, who was the model for Jackie Kennedy in real life, as well as in Nicole Kelby's latest novel, The Pink Suit, which hit the bookstores a week ago today. Susan, tell us a little bit about the storyline in the book and the part you played. Well, Richard, the story is a novel based on facts that takes place during the golden era of fashion from 1960 through 1963 in New York City. Nicole begins her story in Dallas on that fateful November 22, 1963 day. We view the assassination of JFK through Jackie's eyes, who was wearing a pink Chanel suit and a matching pillbox hat that fateful day. That blood-stained suit has become the most legendary garment in American history and has found a place in history in the National Archives. The story is about Chaney Non, the women who ran it, the women who worked it, and the women who bought from it, including Jackie in the legendary pink suit. The story is around Kate, a young and beautiful Irish immigrant who was a seamstress at Chaney Non who helped cut and sew the Chanel pink suit for Jackie. Nicole draws a comparison between the life that Kate and the other immigrant workers endure versus the most aristocratic and wealthy women of that era who bought the most lavish and expensive clothes in the world. Back room versus the front room. A little bit like upstairs, downstairs. Now, Susan, where do you fit into all this? Well, I had just finished modeling school. My agency sent me for an interview at Shaney Nall on Park Avenue in New York City. It was November 1959. The salon resembled a miniature ballroom in all its splendor. I met the owners, two chic and elegantly attired aristocratic ladies in their 70s. I later learned that Nona Park and Sophie Shonard were two very wealthy widows whose names appeared in the New York Social Register, called the Blue Book. They could have taken a more traveled road and whiled away their le last leisure years in idle luxury. But instead, they chose the least traveled road to become two of the shrewdest, sharpest, smartest businesswomen to ever come down the pike. Now, Susan, this sounds almost like an intriguing mystery. What exactly did these two cunning women do? Well, Richard, Nona and Sophie left at once for Paris to attend the haute couture shows to return three weeks later with the same exquisite fabrics as were shown in the Parisian shows, along with sketches of samples drawn from their photographic memories. Now, of course, no sketch pads were ever allowed in the shows. The sketches replicated the original samples of the famous fashion houses of Paris to perfection. When all the toiles, which are canvases, cut to the exact proportion of the original fabrics, were completed, fabrics of the originals were cut to duplicate the toiles, and voila, the copies became the originals at one one-hundredth of the cost. Well, they were cunning women, so then what happened? Well, then came the opening of the show. Park Avenue was lined with limousines as far as the eye could see. In paraded the richest, best-dressed women of that era. Among the attendees were Bay Paley, Mrs. Walter Annenberg, the Mrs. Newhouse, Byfield, Mrs. Charles Reitzman, Elisa Mellon Bruce, who was her silent partner, and the Kennedy girls, Eunice Shriver, Jean Smith, Pat Lawford, Ethel Kennedy, and Joan Kennedy, and of course, Mother Rose. Everyone except Jackie, being the first lady, did not allow her time away from the White House. Anyway, we models paraded around the room in knockoffs of Balenciaga, Balmain, Chanel, Dior, Givenchy, Lanvin, Nina Ricci, Pierre Cardin, Yves Saint Laurent, and more. As the attendees were ooing and eyeing, Nona and Sophie were sheepishly grinning from ear to ear. Now, they sound like incredible ladies for sure, so where do Kate and the others come in? Well, orders were taken and fittings were scheduled. To begin with, the clothes were made on each patron's particular mannequin toiles, again, which were muslins, were put on the mannequins and cut to their exact proportions. They would come in for the first fitting. Then the garments would be cut to the specs of the first fitting. They would return for the second fitting, more changes, until the final fitting, the third, and hopefully the last. The final product would return to the back room where all the seamstresses and tailors would work for days and sometimes into the wee hours to produce the finest, most methodical and exquisite garments ever produced. Directly after the opening show, pictures were taken of me in the samples selected for our first lady, Jackie Kennedy. When Jackie received the photos, she selected her wardrobe. 
Since Jackie and I were the same size, Jackie's clothes were made on me rather than a mannequin. There was never a need for a fitting for Jackie. I worked there until November 61 when I departed for Paris to live there for 18 months. But everything that was made for Jackie up to that time was made on me, including the infamous blood-stained pink suit. Many a time I would see, quote, my clothes coming and going in the magazines, TV, and newspapers, and Nona and Sophie's great hoax will live on forever. Susan, that's an interesting story, and now 50 years later, you're here in Hendersonville. What did you do up to this time? Well, I worked retail in Bonwit Teller as assistant buyer, in Macy's as sales manager, and in Bloomingdale's as merchandise coordinator. Then I paraded on over to 7th Avenue, which is the garment district in New York, and spent 10 years there, where I worked with Ann Klein and Donna Karen, Jeffrey Bean, Jaeger, a sales manager for Zion Tie. Now, that was interesting. That's where I went to Bangkok with some pants and jackets and tops from designers such as Calvin Klein, Ann Klein, Jaeger, and had them copied into beautiful color prints in Pima and Batiste cotton and Bangkok silk. No one was the wiser. Those two women were my mentors. Now you've had a, quite an interesting life. What are you doing now that you're here in Hendersonville, Susan? Well, we came here in retirement. We'd come from Florida where we retired for a number of years and we ended up here. But it wasn't long after that that a friend asked me if I would be willing to talk about fashion for her great life series. And that was a catalyst for my company today. I've heard you have your own company, and I believe it's scarves. Is that correct? Uh, that's correct. I marble scarves in the colors which are known as winter, summer, spring, and autumn colors, coming from that famous book back in 1982 called Color Me Beautiful. Bringing out a woman's best features and making her look youthful and vibrant while giving her panache, pizzazz, and a touch of class. That company is called Sue's Signature Scarves. I'm also undertaking a new venture. I'm adding a personal lifestyle to my company, bringing every aspect of life and what helps women look, feel, and be their best. I'll be including women's personalities and how they coincide to the styles of clothes most appropriate for them, along with their figures and coloring. I'll also be interviewing experts on subjects such as skin care, hair care, hair styling, yoga, nutrition, etiquette, public speaking, everything I can think of that a woman needs to know to give her confidence and self-esteem. But this is all in the works. It will be called Sue's Signature Styles. All right. Well, you are a very busy lady, and we certainly appreciate you coming by and visiting with us today. It was my pleasure, Richard. Thank you. All right. You. Do you have a website for the new company? I it's in the works. My old company is still www.suesignaturescarves.com. Okay. The new one will be www.suesignaturestyles.com. All right. 